Good afternoon and thank you, Dr. Dharmendra, for your uh, generous introduction. Thank you, Dhaurang uh, Bhai, Akash. Thank you, Bansi Sabu and the team Daya Care Con for inviting me. And after an excellent talk by uh, Professor Suzy Bhandari, I am going to talk about which insulin you should initiate. He talked about generation 1 basal insulin, that is glargin, of course, that is gold standard. But now, we also have generation 2 uh, gold standard uh, insulin, that is uh, second generation. Uh, for this talk, uh, I have a disclosure that uh, this is a Sanofi symposium, but the views that I will be presenting will be absolutely unbiased. So I'll be talking about the importance of initiation of insulin and, in, and titration, which already has been covered by Dr. Bandari very well. I'll be also talking about the optimization of insulin therapy, generation second basal insulin, and the practical consideration while using this uh, second generation basal insulin. Uh, the landmark trial that Dr. Sudhir Bandari already discussed that in spite of so many agents available to treat type 2 diabetes, only 1 out of 5 patients is under control, 4 out of 5 are still out of control. That means we are not able to achieve the target in 80% of our patients. And even worse than that is, even they are not under control, only 1 in 4 actually receives insulin. And that is not the end of the story. Even after starting insulin, only about 30 to 40 percent of the patients are under control. Which means that first, we do not control it properly, we do not initiate insulin in time. And even if initiated, our patients cannot achieve the goal, probably because of improper education, improper titration or optimization. So we'll try to cover that in next 10-15 minutes. We know this story from uh, Ruby Holman from UKPDS that during the UKPDS, post UKPDS 10 years and then 25 years, the complications are related to the early glycemic control. If you can control type 2 diabetes early in the course of the disease, that is what we call the early power play one of type 2 diabetes. We understand cricket better, that's why I'm talking about power play. That means that diagnosis, if you control intensively, then it would translate into long-term reduction in the cardiovascular as well as microvascular complications. On the other hand, if you do not control it aggressively initially, it will lead to bad glycemic legacy and that will lead to more and more complication in spite of good control later on. So early control definitely is very, very important. Now we talked about that very less number of patients actually receive insulin though they are deserving that because of the lack of control in spite of three or four drugs. Dr. Bandari also told us that in spite of on three or four drugs, addition of other drugs does not help in reducing the HbA1c further and that's why we need timely initiation of insulin. What, what happens after initiation of insulin? Only two out of ten patients can get goal. So eight out of ten patients still fail to achieve goal. The reasons I quoted is improper titration or improper optimization or improper insulin technique also. Sometimes adherence is also a big problem. So the first consensus document generated by Delphi method on simplification of the basal insulin titration states clearly tells us the story that there is a titration inertia in India. There is initiation inertia and titration inertia. Meaning thereby that even if you have initiated with insulin, say 10 units, 12 units, whatever uh, you are practicing, and I would largely agree to that rather than going on to 0.2 or 0.3 units. Typically, we Indians initiate with 10 units, and there is nothing wrong in that because you are minimizing the risk of hypoglycemia. As long as you are up titrating it regularly, there is nothing wrong in that. But unfortunately, that up titration never happens, and patient stays on that 10 unit dose at the end of two months, three months, when he comes to us for follow-up, maybe three months or six months later, patient is still on that 10 units and the blood glucose does not come down with that 10 units and the uh, HbA1c uh, rarely falls. So this titration inertia is very much there in our population for our physicians, for the educators, as well as from the patient point of view. And the titration period, why I am stressing more importance, because this is the most important period 
after initiation of the suit. The reason being that 80% of the maximum treatment effect that is HbA1c reduction occurs in this titration period of 12 weeks. Which means if the HbA1c was 10 or 9.5 about 1.5 to 2% A1C lowering will occur within first 12 weeks. Thereafter, the lowering will be minimal unless you are uh, intensifying the insulin therapy. Secondly, the highest risk of hypoglycemia is also in the first 12 weeks. And because of that, the highest risk of discontinuation is also within first 12 weeks. So, best control, best treatment effect, best A1C reduction highest risk of hypoglycemia and highest risk of discontinuation because of various reasons one of them being hypoglycemia all these are highest in first 12 weeks and that is why this 12 weeks we must be very very vigilant and we should be educating the patient following up the patient either virtually or physically so as to get the best effect out of the insulin initiation treatment. We know common reasons for insulin discontinuation in our country. First is the hypoglycemia, second is fear of hypoglycemia. Sometimes there is no hypoglycemia. But once insulin is started, someone will tell them that the sugar will be very low. Stop it. Lack of titration and further uh, there are several other reasons because insulin itself still is a stigma and patients like to avoid and because of that after maybe four or six weeks, many of our patients discontinue in spite of our instruction not to discontinue. So we have to balance between the glycemic control versus hypoglycemia risk and that is why when you initiate insulin therapy we should be initiating with an insulin which has very good efficacy which may be equal for all the insulin because that is how the insulin unit is defined but at same efficacy the risk of hypoglycemia should be lower and this insulin is preferable because hypoglycemia is one of the factor that limits or it's a limiting factor as far as the insulin up titration or getting better control is concerned. So from that point of view the second generation basal insulins like insulin 2GO offers us a great advantage. First of all it has a stable and prolonged action of more than 24 hours. The large U100 typically lasts for less than 24 or 24 hour at best. Whereas second generation that is Glargin U300 because of its higher concentration lasts for more than 24 hours up to 27 hours. So you have 3 hours flexibility. Moreover there is less glycemic variability compared to U100 Glargin. It gives effective and sustained glycemic control and the studies have shown that there is less overall and nocturnal hypoglycemia compared to first generation basal insulin and also insulin degludec will come to that a little bit later it should be safer during titration and maintenance this is very important because as i said titration period governs how long the patient will continue to take insulin and it will also decide how much a1c is going to happen over a period of time it should be associated with minimal weight gain and because of low risk of hypoglycemia second generation insulin has lower weight gain compared to the first generation and there should be flexibility because with U100 you have to take it at same time every day with second generation basal that is 2GO you have 3 hours flexibility 3 hours earlier or 3 hours later doesn't matter and that much flexibility I think is necessary because you cannot take insulin at the same time every day for the uh, rest of your life. What are the evidences in favor of U300 large? Several studies starting from PKPD study then the addition full addition program the deliver and the ATO studies which we will discuss a little bit, type 1 diabetes patient studies, patient experiences, PKPD versus Degludec and then the randomized as well as the real world studies comparing it with Degludec including the BRIGHT study and now the era is of time in range so we have an in range study. We will discuss some of them starting with ATOs. This was a real world study where there were about 4000 plus patients and about 1200 patients were from India. The A1C reduction from baseline of 9.28, there was 1.87% reduction. So from 9.2, A1C came to about 7.3 or 7.4, which is a very good reduction when you initiate insulin and up titrate it. 65 milligram per deciliter self-monitored plasma glucose reduction and very 
minimal increase in the risk of hypoglycemia. About 25% achieved target at month 6 and 45% achieved at 12 months. Still a very good number. Everyone cannot achieve target just by initiation of insulin. You need to intensify, you need to maybe add another insulin or uh, as Dr. Hammond would say, you need to add a GLP-1 analog to insulin sometimes. But in this study, still 45% of the patients achieved target at the end of 12 months. The dose of insulin was almost same compared to the insulin large in dose, not reduction, not much higher. The key message from the ETO study was that, that titration of glargin U300 in people with type 2 diabetes is effective and in achieving the A1C goals, improving glycemic control with low incidence of reported hypoglycemia. Then we will discuss about the BRIGHT study which is a comparison of insulin U300 glargin versus Deglurec, both second generation basal insulin. So how do you compare that? Obviously at the end of 24 weeks, both these study groups had equal degree of HbA1c control because these are all treat to target studies where you need to achieve equal degree of HbA1c reduction. So equal degree of HbA1c reduction, so the potency of both the insulin is almost similar. The overall hypoglycemia rate was similar, but what was different? The rate of hypoglycemia in the titration period. Again, coming back to the importance of the titration period because this is the period when maximum discontinuation or maximum hypoglycemia is going to occur. And you can see that overall the hypoglycemia risk was lower with U300 glargin compared to Deglutin. If it was confirmed hypoglycemia anytime, if cutoff value was 70, 26 percent less. If cutoff value was 54, it was 37 percent less, even for the benefit. Anytime confirmed hypoglycemia 24 hours with different cutoffs, 23 percent and 43 percent reduction. And nocturnal confirmed hypoglycemia less than 70, nocturnal 70 or less is hypo, 35 percent less. So overall, the risk of hypoglycemia in the titration period was significantly lower in the glargin 300 group compared to Deglutec group. And this offers a great advantage because when you are initiating insulin, the biggest fear in patient's mind or the relative's mind or even our mind is the risk of hypoglycemia. So if you have an insulin which has equal efficacy but lower risk of hypoglycemia in titration period, I think that should be preferred very much. Now we know that in the last decade, we have not been talking about just fasting or postprandial or uh, HbA1c. We are talking of time in range. The time has changed from HbA1c to time in range. And in this study, uh, there are several studies starting from 2012 up to 2023. All the guidelines have now started recommending time in range to be an important parameter for deciding the glycemic control. It's an important parameter overall also. So if you have an insulin which has low variability in the insulin clamp studies, I'm not going to discuss the insulin infusion rate as well as the overall dose, but this has less peak compared to insulin deglutec. You can see here, uh, the green is uh, glargin 300, the blue is deglutec. Again here, the glucose insulin rate is more variable with deglutec compared to U300 showing that it has less variability compared to deglutec and that translates into better time in range also and this type 2 diabetes flash glucose monitoring study shows us that the risk of hypoglycemia is lower with uh, uh, insulin glargin U300 compared to insulin deglutec. So again time in range also shows that there is better time in range with 300 unit glargin compared to degludec with less hypoglycemia, especially nocturnal hypoglycemia. Uh, so the basal plus versus idegast, because nowadays idegast is also gaining a lot of popularity because it combines two different insulins. It's a co-formulation, not a premix insulin. It combines one short acting or rapid acting with one long acting uh, in single uh, cartridge. But again in this study also the time in range of basal plus glulysine twice a day, so three injections per day versus two injections of idagast 
again the time in range was better for glargin based therapy hypoglycemia was 7 times lower nocturnal hypoglycemia was 18 times lower which means that glargin plus blue lysine twice a day offers better control better time in range much less hypoglycemia compared to idegas twice a day in insulin naive patients the story is no different so i'm not going to details of that Finally, we'll talk about practical considerations on use of blood in U3. First and foremost is it is easy and safer to titrate basal insulin. You can up titrate as uh, Dr. Bandari told on one unit uh, every day that is inside uh, study base or two unit every three days or depending upon your own experience. Generally, we up titrate by two or four units uh, every three days not uh, very uh, aggressive titration of 8 units what was this type uh, so this is very easy to titrate what is the initial dose usually we start with 10 units typically but one can start with 0.2 units of kilo, uh, insulin per kilogram so for a typical 70 kg person start with say 40 what is the preferred timing of injection any time of the day no need to give at bedtime you can give at any time of the day generally we begin insulin in the morning time because that is the time when patient can be most adherent to it. and there is an advantage in blood in u300 that you can give it at any time with flexibility of three hours here or there can OADs be continued yes OADs can be continued with all basal insulin sulfonylurea you need to cut down the dose if appropriate what is the titration regime that we already discussed up to what units you should up titrate so 0.5 units per kilogram per day not more than that and what are the unique advantages over the gold standard glargin u100 first and most important is the duration is more than 24 hours there is less variability more flexibility lower risk of hypo lower risk of nocturnal hypo and that's why lower weight gain safer titration and that's why better control and better adherence also whether we can use it in elderly patients yes the addition atos bright deliver all these studies have clearly shown that in elderly this is one of the safer insulins because of less risk of mind and in the patients with renal impairment also again you need an insulin which has lower risk of hypo again the addition deliver bright and atos studies have shown that in patients with renal impairment this may be safer compared to u100 class the debate is whether this insulin can be used in pregnancy because all these days we have been believing that only NPH and Datamir can be used in pregnancy, the other insulins cannot be used. Only in last one of the years the debate has uh, a spark, but the guidelines or the label indication according to the CGI is that glargine can be used in pregnancy if clinically indicated. The same indication applies to most of the other basal insulins also. So it is no different, you can safely use glargin U100 or U300 in pregnancy if clinically indicated. The device is, final one minute, yes I will just conclude. The device also makes the difference because this device contains 450 units per 3 ml, 150 unit per ml. So the device will contain more insulin compared to the other insulin, so it is uh, going to last longer. Secondly. The, the pen is very friendly and uh, since you have to inject lower volume because of the concentration of the insulin, the pain may also be less. So to summarize, insulin glargin U300 provides effective and sustained glycemic control. It gives full day coverage, lower glycemic variability, once daily injection, less painful because you have to inject less volume reduced overall and nocturnal hypoglycemia and that's why lower weight gain flexible dosing flexibility up to three hours plus or minus improved quality of life and that's why improved patient satisfaction and it is safe during titration and maintenance period but especially in titration period it has got specific advantage compared to all other basal uh, I'll stop here. Thank you very much for your very kind audience and thank you once again, Dayakar Khan, for giving me this podcast.